here, it's called quantum levitation or quantum locking. It's a phenomena between a superconductor and a magnetic field. It's not new phenomena. We know about it more than 100 years ago. We discovered it. But only due to reason technical advantage, I can come here and show it to you outside the lab here in this convention. But what is superconductor? Well, a superconductor is a material that once cooled below a certain temperature, go to a quantum state. Now, I, said, I, I will say it again, a quantum state. We know solid state, we know liquid state. This is a quantum state of material, which is a new physics to us all. But what's so super about the superconductor? What's so special about it? Well, first of all, it's this superconductivity, zero electric resistance. Electricity is the flow of electron in a material. Now, in a normal conductor, those electrons sometimes hit the material atom and disperse their energy into heat. And we know that because we use it to boil our water for coffee or keep our food warm. Now, in a superconductor, there is no collision, so no dispersion of energy. I can store energy forever. I can move endless amount of energy with no uh, defection, with no wear and tear, it's superconductor. Now, it's not the only thing that superconductor is good at. A superconductor also don't like magnetic field inside of it. Okay, so he's changing himself in order to push it out of him, push the magnetic field out of him. He's doing that by creating its own magnetic field, changing the surrounding so nothing will go into it. Now, believe it or not, even a superconductor is not perfect, and some of those magnetic, magnetic fields do go through him. And those are going through him with a very small, very, very tiny, think about a tiny stream of magnetic flux, magnetic field that go through him. And he doesn't like it. So he does everything he can to keep them in one place, because once they move in him, he will lose his superconductivity. It will become just a normal material, and he doesn't want it. So he actually pin those very small strings. They are so small, they are act like quantum particle, actually. They are that small. And once he pin them inside of him, he actually get pinned in a 3D position in the air. He, as you saw before, he is levitated himself, pinned to this 3D three position, three position. Now, when I say some string I'm being modeled, actually, in this small superconductor that I have here, we have more than 10 billions of those streams. So it's very stable and very strong locking in the air. Now, I see some of you may understand what I'm saying. Some of you are already getting bored with the physics. So let's see what I'm talking about. Now, what I have here is just a magnet, a very strong magnet, and it's in an array that creates a strong magnetic field above it. Now, I, as I said before, I need to cool down a superconductor, so I cool in it using a liquid nitrogen, and you can see it's now boiling and cooling down. And in the second, it will be cooled down to above minus 200 degrees Celsius. I can take it and I can levitate it in the air. Now, as I say, it's not just levitation. It's actually quantum locking, so I can change the array of it. I can play around. I can move it. I can even turn it around. Because I have here a quantum locking. It's not just levitation. It's not just two magnets opposite to another. This is quantum locking. Those 10 billions of string keep it in the air. Now, I can also take a symmetrical magnet. Over here, the magnetic field is symmetrical around it. It's a round magnet. And once I do that, if I take a superconductor, I can have a motion. Now, this is freakless motion. As you can see, it will continue doing this until it will warm up and loses its superconductivity. Now, of course, I can also turn it around and have it roll. 
Now, I don't have to stay that small magnet. I can, of course, take a larger one, a huge circular magnet. I can actually have it in any shape I want, as long as the magnetic field around it is, is the same. The superconductor only sees the magnetic field around him. It doesn't know what, uh, what, the, what there is outside of it. So, of course, I can have motion without frequency. Thank you. Now, as I say, this is still quantum locking. It's not just levitation. So if I change it, it will move the way I, I pinned it, the way the magnetic flux pin inside of him. I can, of course, edit another one. Can try. Oh. We can try two levitator. One above another. And if we are lucky, let's try another thing. I have to keep it cooled down. That's the real difficulty working with superconductor. Whew. Now let's try this. Let's take the big one. Now, if I lock it, I could turn it around. It doesn't have to stay in one position. No. No, it's already warm up. Let's take a cooled one. And once I lock it here, it will move. Again, until it will warm up. Once it's warming up, it's losing the superconductivity. Thank you. <laughs> it is. Now, let me tell you a little more about the superconductor I have here. Though it's only 4 by 4 centimeter wide, it's half a micron thick. And it can carry up to 70,000 times its own weight. So if I have here a superconductor that is not half a micron, but let's say 20 millimeter thick, I could lift a car. I could lift 10 cars, actually. It's that strong. With just a magnet and a superconductor, I can have cargo shifted easily. But I'm not here only to talk about the physics and only to show you this. I'm also talk, coming here to talk with you about the business or the industry of superconductor. As I said before, we discovered it 100 years ago. And still today, it's been used in very, very small cases. In an MRI machine to create a very strong uh, electromagnet. It's been used in the space station to store energy. But nothing is commercial, nothing that you can use or see actually today. And this is where we came. Coming from the university, we believe that we have to take it out of the physics lab. And being academic, we believe in education. And when I say the business of education, it means that my client today are teachers who are showing this to their kids, to their students. And it's also the student who, after seeing it, get so enthusiastic, they want to use it to win scholarship and to try it in science fair. But it also came to the entrepreneur, to those people who, who just sit in front of the computer and look for what next. So for good example is this restaurant owner that came and asked us, can we levitate food? Like, he would, like, he would think it would be very cool to get your dish levitator. Now, it sounds easy because you see it's levitator, but it was very, actually really complicated because you want it stable and you need it to lift a lot of weight. But yes, we did it. We levitate food. We can do it for two minutes, we can levitate 200 grams. I know it's not shock breaking, and I know some of you may raise their eyebrows saying like, 
for the last 10 minutes, he talked about this amazing material that can do amazing stuff in the quantum state. And what does he does with it? He does with it food presentation or marketing tools. And I'm telling you that our vision is to, first of all, educate people, have everyone here to see it, to feel it, to use it. So next year, I wouldn't need to come here and to show it. You will see it everywhere. And though not everybody go to a science museum, and not everybody study physics for sure in high school or university, everybody eat and everybody shop. And if I could have this product outside where everybody can see and, and play and use it, then I did the first step. Then it's out there. Then it's not just like sci-fi. Then it's not just university. It's out of the lab. So this is marketing is just a tool for me to show you this amazing product, amazing material. But the real question, obviously, it's what comes next. What after everybody see it? What after you play it? What can we actually do with it? That's a big question. Well, I can think about transportation, of course. You saw here motion. I can think about cargo holding, as I say. If I can have a superconductor two centimeter, I can carry a building in the air. I can also see it being used in manufacturing, delicate manufacturing, because I have a quantum locking of a, of a surface, I can see storage energy because there's no loss of energy. I can see many things. But the real question is not what I can see the future with this. I was with the lab for with many years I play with this, so my mind is already set. I, I see one thing. The real question is what do you think you can do with this? What is your vision for it? Now, we in quantum experience have a vision of this superconductor. We believe and we want to get that in the next 10, 5 to 10 years, superconductor will be as commonly as used as silicon. Now, my dreams and my vision are narrow to what I know. But once it's out there, once every one of you seen it, touch it, play it, use it, the dream could be endless. Thank you very much.